But I thought I'd just start by having a bit of a think about ASW, and in many ways we're a fairly small organisation. When you think of the hundreds of students we churn out from universities every year, um, we sit around the 6,000 mark of members and have done fairly consistently over a long period of time. So, you know, people come and people go in the ASW membership. But people expect a lot of us, you know, like, why isn't ASW commenting here and why isn't we doing that and how about this? And, and so, you know, as one of the volunteers actively involved, I often have to remind myself, I'm a volunteer. We're volunteers, we can do as much as we can. Uh, even though the weight of expectations, I guess, is high. And we've had fairly significant um, uh, financial, well, in 2002 and 2003, 2003, 2004, 2002, 2003, actually, we, we came upon a fairly major financial disaster within the organisation to the point where you know, we were considering to what extent we could continue. And uh, that was my beginning stage in the national, of uh, being involved nationally. And, I was really aware of how potentially vulnerable an organisation can be. We've gone through a fantastic period of change, lots of cutbacks, staff have really worn a lot of the cutbacks, and of course all of the, all of the various communities have had to wear um, less support and uh, expect to put in more time. But we're around to, to a, um, I was say deficit, we've moved from the deficit, we're now in the black. And we've got a new president, um, Bob elected last November uh, for a three-year term. We can have a structural review of those, but that's, that's theoretically what Bob's here for, and maybe more. And I guess I've had the um, opportunity of working with Bob on executive now for a And he's terrific. At just the time when we're building, he's um, highly energetic. I do know you do sleep at times, but you know, some, some people sort of think, is this, does this person sleep? Highly energetic, very visionary, lots of ideas, and so Bob's just a, a really good time to be involved in our study as we're climbing and building and, and redeveloping. So I'd really like you to welcome Bob to yeah. Australia this morning. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Sue. I was uh, delighted to, to be invited by, uh, by Don, who's now disappeared. Um, um, to come and uh, spend a bit of time in South Australia. I haven't been here since uh, since your very very successful World Congress, um, which was a real treat. Uh, and uh, and, and uh, where I uh, ate uh, lovely uh, King uh, King George uh, uh, Whiting. That's it. Uh, which was really good too. Um, I'm going to talk today, um, and it actually feeds into uh, to the uh, at least partly into the structural review. That what I'm going to be talking about about where where social work, and I've I've actually done this presentation a few times around the country, um, and it's been received pretty well. Um, it's it's an, it was an attempt by me originally just to try and get my head around why it didn't feel so good to be a social worker. You know why why was it that you know I felt like we were really sort of pushing and struggling endlessly just to just to stay where we were, um, and so. Um, so I spent some time sort of thinking that through and did it for a presentation and then melded it a few more times um, and, and uh, developed a bit more to try and get a better understanding. So what today, uh, what, what I'm going to offer you today is not, um, is not really a, a, a crystal clear vision um, and I don't see it, that's my task. Uh, what I'm going to try and do is offer a framework to help you understand better where we are and what are the sorts of things that we're going to try and deal with. Um, I'm not meaning for it to be a pessimistic um, scenario, but I am going to try and call it like it is, because there is a lot of um, there is a lot of difficulty that we face. Now that said, I should qualify this as hey, look, um, I'm not today presenting the vision of the ASW board. I want to make that crystal clear. These are just my my views. If they resonate with you, or some of them do, that's great. If they don't, then uh, I'd be interested to hear what your views. In fact, at the end, what we'd like to do is have some discussion, some smaller group discussion, and get you thinking for yourself and perhaps feeding back to us, because <clears throat> um, where I see the association at the moment is, is we are in a significant period of transition, um, but we have a great opportunity uh, to apply our problem-solving skills to get through some, uh, some difficult, uh, difficult times. Uh, for those of you who might remember, uh, my apologies there to uh, 
but to sue the tram, that's what sue the tram felt. Uh, I always thought it was wonderful uh, the, the, the album's Crisis, what a crisis, and of course you see the guy there sitting uh, underneath, the, um, underneath the umbrella whilst there's devastation all around. And I think in some senses that captures, captures for me a little bit of bad social work at the moment. Um, that some, in some sense we've sort of retreated to the bunker. Uh, whilst things around us haven't been so great. So what am I going to... That, that's a storm that occurred in, um, in Redcliffe in Brisbane about two seasons ago. I just, I just liked it. It was great. It's an incredible storm to come up over the bay. Um, so this is what we're going to cover today. I'm going to try and look at the characteristics of the contemporary environment uh, for social work and the human service. I'm going to try and break that down into four areas. First, I'm going to look very broadly at society. Then I'm going to look at some of the structural changes that have been occurring. Third, I'm going to have a look at the sort of significant changes that have happened at a community level for us. And then finally, I'm going to have a look at, well, what about us as a profession? And then I'm going to move on and have a look at the practice field uh, context, because it's not the same everywhere. So what's been happening, for example, in child protection isn't necessarily the same as been happening at community-based organisations. And that's, it's important that we remember that things aren't necessarily the same right across the board. Um, and then I'm going to have a little bit of a look at, uh, just a brief look at uh, social work at the AASW and where, what some of the constraints are for us as an organisation, but also what some of the opportunities are. And there are some really quite profound opportunities if we, if we wish to take them up. Okay. Um, this is perhaps a, a bit of a caveat like before. Uh, I don't want today to come across as depressing. Um, in fact, I had yesterday I was in Melbourne um, at a national child protection forum that was run by the Federal Department of Families and Community Services and Indigenous Affairs, looking at the state of the nation in child protection, which is pretty bleak, I think, but that's for tomorrow. Um, I'd like to say this, that despite all the significant changes in the way in which social care is provided, uh, and, they have been, and they've been quite profound, I think it's really important to always remember that there will be a need for, for social work. And that's just purely on a human level to try and deal with um, the misery that is around as part of our human condition. So it's important for us not to get too glum about <coughs> uh, the way the social mandate, the societal mandate for social work has been reconfigured. Um, in the end, we actually work with people's pain and we try to assist people to, to solve the problems that they confront. So there actually will always be a role for social work, however it's structured and however it's uh, delivered. 